Merry Christmas, Mountain. Thanks for joining on this very special Christmas Day service. Over the past couple of days, we've been worshiping and celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, during Christmas Eve services at all four of Mountain campuses and streaming right here online. It's been so good to be together. And after the lead up to the holiday season, I hope today's special Christmas day service is a gift to you and that you've been able to experience the love, joy, peace, and hope that the Christmas season brings. Over the past few days, we've had the opportunity to hear stories from some of Mountain's younger generation about their favorite things on Christmas day. Here's what they said. My favorite part about Christmas day is how I get to see my family and hang out with them all day. My favorite part of Christmas is seeing the looks of joy on people's faces when they open their presents for the first time. My favorite part of Christmas Day is being around the tree and opening presents with my family. My favorite part about Christmas Day is helping make a brunch and eating it with my family. My favorite thing about Christmas Day is when I go over to my grandparents' house and see all my relatives and we all just have a fun time. My favorite part about Christmas is when my mom, my dad, and my sister open the presents that I gave. It's so good to hear and the reminders of all the joys that Christmas Day brings, some of the favorite things from so many. And it also makes me think about some of the special things that my family experiences on Christmas Day, the joy that my husband and I have as we watch our own children celebrate the birth of Jesus and open gifts around the tree. But more so, it's about our presence together as a family, not just the presence under the tree, but the presence and the joy of being together on this very special day. I'm grateful for that and the blessings of the way God has richly, richly blessed my family. And maybe you're feeling that way today too. It's that kind of gratitude that we mark when we come together and we gather through the meal of communion. So today, when you gather around a table for a meal, maybe with family and friends, just remember God's goodness. Remember the sacrifice of Jesus as you eat and you drink together and contemplate these words from 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, which reads, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Amen. We're gonna sing about this love right now.
nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature Christmas. I'm glad we get to spend a few minutes together. Whether you're in your living room right now, or maybe some of you are still in your PJs today, maybe you're with some family or all by yourself, some of you maybe just getting home from work, it's Christmas. And it's kind of a cliche, I think, to say how busy this time of year is for everyone, right? But there sure is a lot going on, you know, with all the gatherings and the, the, the gifts and stuff to get ready, cards and people and packages and decorating and all of that stuff. So let's have a moment of calm in the middle of, of all that and find our focus. 
I was at a Christmas party uh, a bit ago, and there was about 150 people in this room. The place was packed. Everybody was standing up, and we were all singing this like worship song together. And I was standing on one far edge of the room, and partway through the song, I happened to look, and there was like this alley between that big crowd of people, and I could see all the way completely over to the other side of the room, and there was Carla, my wife. And it was like this little channel opened up and just for a second I could see her and I smiled at her and we locked eyes, I waved. We had this kind of like cool little moment there in the middle of that big room with all that stuff going on, all those people there. But in the middle of all that, we still kind of found each other and, and connected. And, and you know what? Uh, we can all do that right now, but with, but with Jesus, right? Like there's a lot going on. Maybe even today in your house, there's a lot going on. People and whatnot in and out, but let's just turn our eyes on Jesus for a minute and find him in the middle of it all uh, and put aside everything else for a bit and, and focus in this moment of calm on Christ. I gotta confess something though, uh, funny story. So later when I said to Carla, hey, that was pretty cool when we kind of had that moment and locked eyes and kind of found each other in the middle of that gathering and she, she kind of went, it was pretty clear as soon as I said that she had no idea what I was talking about. So it turns out I had a moment, but we did not have a moment. She was actually, I think, actually worshiping Jesus, how maybe I should have been in that moment. So, hey, one of the most meaningful things we can do is read through the Christmas story uh, from Scripture. And uh, I love it from the Gospel of Luke. Maybe you do too. Uh, we've got some friends who are going to help us with that. Taji, Imani, Annie, Ben, Hannah and Priscilla are all gonna share from the scriptures and uh, we're gonna begin with the first three verses of Luke chapter two. And when we do, I want you to pay particular attention to the first three words. I'm gonna ask you in a minute what they were, so take note, let's begin. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Luke wants to tell us how Jesus showed up. And do you remember the words he begins with? In those days. Like this happened when Caesar did the census thing, you know, like when Quirinius was in office, right? He wants to show us that this is a real historical event and what's going on at that time. But more than that, in those days, reminds us that Jesus comes in the middle of ordinary life. Like everyone's hustling around, trying to pay their taxes, they're stressed out with traveling, they're going home to see relatives and all that entails, right? In other words, those days were a lot like these days. <laughs> That's when God shows up in ordinary times to ordinary people doing ordinary things. And I know we're looking back to the time when Jesus first came, but don't forget, Jesus didn't just show up in those days. He's present in these days, like in our lives right now. The coolest promise of Christmas is not that Jesus came. It's that he still comes. He's with us right here, right now, in this day. Now let's look at the next few verses from, from Luke. And as you hear it this time, I want you to pay attention to the last few words, okay? Let's listen. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Did you catch the last few words there? Because there was no room for them in the inn. No room for them in the inn. It's crazy to think about, isn't it? I mean, the eternal, almighty creator of the universe is coming to earth in human form, showing up as a baby, the one that everyone is waiting for, the one that everyone needs so badly. And you'd think there would be this big welcome, you know? This red carpet, special treatment uh, parade or something to welcome God in our midst, but instead, like, nobody's got room for him. 
And when he does get in, he's kind of shoved to the edge of the house, out with the animals. Hey, Jesus, sorry, we don't really have a bed for you. You know, I'm going to blow up a mattress for him. How about you just sleep in this animal feed trough? And, and we might say, well, gosh, how could they do that? You know, I can't believe they didn't make room for God. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, I realize sometimes I do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, is there space in your life, in your schedule, in your heart for Jesus? Or are we sometimes a little too cluttered, too crowded? You ever get to the end of your day and you realize you just kind of shut Jesus out? I mean, he's always with us, but I'm not sure we're always aware of his presence, are we? Like he gets pushed to the edge of the house out in the, out in the food trough. How are you doing at making room for Jesus in your life? Like, is there room for that relationship? Is there room for hearing him through his word? Is there room for speaking with him in prayer? You know, when we really make room for Jesus in the midst of your work and worldly concerns, I think we hear from Jesus more. You're gonna sense his spirit nudging you like in the middle of an argument. You're going to sense him prompting you to give something to someone, to forgive a person. Or there's an assignment he's going to give you when you make room for him. And if those kind of promptings and nudges aren't really happening much in your life, it might be because there's just not room in the clutter of your crowded heart and mind for him. Let me tell you about one simple habit that I'm working on that can help make more room for Jesus in my life. Maybe it can help you too. And that is to simply acknowledge him First thing in the morning, like a quick kneeling prayer by the side of my bed before I even get out of bed. Sometimes I'm half asleep, but before I, I, I worry about all the things of the day, just making room first thing for Jesus. It kind of frames my whole day in a different way, you know? I wonder, what about you, like how you start your day? Maybe instead of grabbing your phone and filling up your mind with all that stuff, just like start with Jesus. And at night, instead of Netflix or scrolling through that phone being the last thing you do before you sleep, maybe make room for Jesus with a simple prayer, a little scripture before drifting off. And then Jesus can be like the center of your subconscious, even as you sleep. We don't live in Bethlehem, but in a world like ours, we really need to find simple ways to make Jesus like the center of our lives or he'll get crowded out. I love the words, to that verse away in a manger. Let me share them with you and maybe invite you to pray it with me as a prayer. It goes like this. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Now we need Jesus close and uh, he will be when we make room for him. Well, the next part of the story is, I think, one of our favorites, right? And as we read through these next few verses, I'd like you to notice the feeling or the emotion that the shepherds have, okay? Listen up. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Okay, so the shepherds, right, they're out in their fields and the angels show up and what feeling do the shepherds have? Fear, that's right. These guys are scared out of their minds. It says they were terrified. And I thought, well, that's fitting because we ourselves seem like we have so much fear today all around us and inside of us too. It feels, feels like, you know, the world's just becoming a scarier place and there's so much for fear and anxiety and dread all around us, right? We're, we're afraid of getting cancer. We're afraid of losing someone close to us. We're afraid of getting old, afraid of getting fat, uh, a, a fear of, of being robbed, fear of the marketplace, a fear of, of what the market, stock market, fear of not having enough, fear of not being enough. 
fear of getting found out, fear is with our family, our friends, uh, you know, violence, fear of dying. And the angel says in the middle of all that, you guys, hey, don't be afraid. I've got good news of great joy for all y'all. Jesus is here. Friends, the best thing for our fears is Jesus. It was true for the shepherds. It's true for all people. The best thing for your fear is the joy that can be ours when it comes to Christ. And then you remember when the angel shouted that next phrase, glory to God in the highest and on earth, what? Peace, peace to the people. So you've got a choice, fear or joy and peace. The shepherds lived in fear, but God's message was, now that Jesus is here, you can replace that fear with joy and with peace. And I think the same is true for us, even today. Sometimes I think we just need to take our fears one at a time and let Jesus replace them with joy and with peace. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Think about that, cast your cares. The idea that with that word, literally, it means to throw violently, to like chuck it, like toss it, like cast your cares, throw your fears, take your worries and some of the negative stuff that's weighing you down today and chuck it in the direction of Jesus and let him replace it by bringing joy, even in the middle of what you're going through. Let him give you peace, even in the middle of everything. So let's really like just do that for a moment. Like, let's think about the fear that's taken up space in your head, the fear that's in your heart, whatever it is, however small or big, think of it really specifically, like if, as if it's in your hand. And then let's, on this Christmas day, let's just chuck it in the direction of Jesus and say, Jesus, we cast our cares on you because we know you care for us. We need more of your joy and peace in its place. Trade your fear today for the joy and peace of Jesus. Okay, let's finish the story because these last few verses are, I think, really fun. And as you listen, pay attention. After the angels leave the shepherds, what are the first two words the shepherds say? Okay, listen. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who's lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Okay, I love this because those frightened shepherds are now like on fire, right? And did you notice the first two words? They're like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I love that because if you've met Jesus and he's in your life, that's what we ought to be saying too. Like, let's go, come on. It says they hurried. It says they went all over the place spreading the word. It says they, they jumped around glorifying God and praising God because everything that they'd seen and experienced, they were pumped up about Jesus and they weren't gonna just sit on it and hide it and hog it and hoard it. They were gonna worry about offending somebody. They, they were just like, let's go. And I want more of that in my life. You probably need more of that in your life too, where Jesus, like he really means something to me to the point where I'm ready for that moment when God opens the door to say something, to share something with someone, whoever God brings into your path. Are you ready to hurry up and to share your faith and to, to, to spread the word about what God's done in your family or the difference he's making in your life or how you see him at work in your church? Those guys were looking for every opportunity because they had a let's go attitude and that's contagious. In fact, it says that everyone who heard them was affected. They, they were amazed. And whenever you just keep it real and look for those moments when God opens the door to share what he's meant in your life, why faith or the church is even a part of your life, God's gonna use that to make an impact on someone. There's a lot of gift giving going on this time of year, but you know, the best gift you may ever give is the gift that invites someone 
toward Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. So I want to tell you about something. Um, beginning in January, we're doing a series of messages called Weeds in My Garden. You're going to hear about it in just a minute. But it's really just an honest look at mental health. And here's something I know that you've got, I've, you've got friends, you've got family who would really benefit from what we're going to talk about. But they might not if someone doesn't invite them. So this is the perfect time. It's a great opportunity at the beginning of a new year. People are interested in this topic. So I hope you'll think about the three, maybe four, or even five friends or family who don't have a connection to Jesus. They don't have a church right now. And decide that you're going to do exactly what those shepherds did and just say, let's go and see what happens. Well, thanks for spending this time together with our focus on Christ. Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful for you sending your son, Jesus Christ, and we, we thank you for this opportunity to kind of find him in the midst of all that's going on. Help us today and in the coming year to really just do whatever we need to do to make room for him in our lives, our schedules, our hearts. Help us to trade our fears for your joy and your peace. Give us a let's go attitude so we can just truly just believe and live out the truth that Jesus has made an impact in our lives and he really is good news of great joy for all people. Bless everyone listening to my voice right now. Bless them, Lord. Bless their families, bless their hearts, bless their, life, their lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Merry Christmas, friends. Thanks for spending part of your Christmas day worshiping our good God with Mountain. In just a few days, it's going to be 2023, and Mountain is kicking off the new year with a brand new series, one that I think will be encouraging and helpful to you and others you love. Check out this video from Ben. The first few weeks of January could be the most important weeks of our entire year because we're gonna look at the weeds in our garden. It's a way of saying, it's okay to not be okay all the time. We're gonna have an honest look at mental health. Stuff like suicide and self-harm, stress and anxiety and worry and depression and shame and low self-esteem, stuff like that. Because this is the stuff that so many of us are struggling with and we need some help and we need some hope. So pray for us as we prepare for this, but also, Think about who you're gonna bring with you. You know, friends and neighbors, family and coworkers, because everybody is either struggling with this or knows someone who is. And we're gonna dive in to Jesus' word and discover that not only is it okay to not be okay, there's help and there's hope. It's okay to not be okay. Those words bring a sense of peace to me and I hope they do to you as well because those words speak truth into our hearts. Friends, God knows our heart and he knows our struggle and God is ready for us to invite him into every part of our lives. And as we enter into the new year and into this new series, that's exactly what we will be doing, welcoming God and inviting him into our struggles, no matter what they are. So right now there's gonna be a QR code on your screen and also a number where you can text the word survey. This is gonna help us all as we prepare our hearts for this next series. It's a short survey five questions. It's going to take you less than 60 seconds and it's anonymous, friends. I want to encourage you right now to interact with that. Whether you scan the QR code or you text the word survey to the number on your screen, both of these options are going to send you a link to that sur survey. Go ahead and interact with that as we close our time together. Again, this will help us prepare our hearts as we launch into this very important new series into the new year. And as a reminder, friends, services are happening on New Year's Day at all four of Mountain campuses and streaming right here online. Go ahead and check out the website for all service times and locations. Go in peace today, friends. From the Mountain family to yours, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next weekend in the new year.
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Beth. So Joseph also went up from Nazareth, from is it Judea to Judea to Judea? Oh my gosh! <laughs> this was the first census that took place while that took place while 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 current Quirinius 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 smile more. No. He placed him in a, ma in a manger. Oh my gosh. And was accepting a child. <laughs> I'm ready. And was accepting a child. And was accepting. <laughs> did, I did it again. And was expecting a child. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> expecting. 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 Who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Innocent and full of life, yet born to die. 